Access Point a la mode. Let's begin. One of the unsung heroes in our wireless networks, I think, is the access point. Because we give so much credit to the controller. Oh, the mighty controller making the decisions and everything else. However, the access point without the radios in the access point and them following the instructions given to them by the controller, our wireless networks without those access points wouldn't be too effective. In the lab, I've got several access points, including I've got three or four of these guys. These are LAPs, which stands for Lightweight Access Points. 1131 AG. So this cover right here, it slides back a little bit so it exposes these connectors. So there's the power. If you're using an external power transformer, the connection would plug in right there. This is the ethernet port, the RJ45 for ethernet. So if you're doing power over ethernet, you don't need the power outlet at all if you're supplying power through the switch. And here's a console port if you wanna connect for command line interface access to this device. And that's what these are right here. These are indicators of what those ports are. Right here, there's a mode button, and that's gonna be very, very handy. For example, let's say we have a brand new access point, it has an incompatible version of software with the wireless LAN controller. How do we get the software on it? I'll walk you through in a separate video on how we can use that mode button to assist us in TFTPing over an appropriate image. These little guys here, they're labeled antennas, so I am presuming that that's what they are. Four different antennas in this access point. And here, right there, is an LED, and it actually connects behind the scenes to this piece of plastic. And so this ring lights up in different colors as indicators, status indicators, regarding the access point, which is a pretty cool effect, especially if you have a whole bunch lined up. <laughs> and they're all in the process of rebooting, or they can't find their controller, or what have you, and the color codes are fun to watch. It's kind of like an uber geek light party. Now, if we ask most people, hey, what is the access point used for? Most people would say, well, the access point is going to be the radio, and they would be right. That allows a customer like Bob to associate with a wireless local area network, connect, and get access through the distribution system to the rest of the network. And that is great. However, the access point's job isn't just data for the customer. It also has a whole host of other modes it can operate in, and that's what we're gonna focus on so that we're aware of some of the possibilities of what we could do besides just data with an access point. We're gonna mix this one up a little bit. I'm gonna walk you through how to set the mode on your particular APs, and then we'll take a look at each of the options for what those modes do. Now, the cool thing is that there's more than one way to get to the configuration for changing the mode of an access point. We could do it through the monitor page, Scroll down to our access points, go to the details, and click on here, which would take us to the details for that access point. Or we could go to wireless, and you'll notice we have the same screen right here. So it really doesn't matter how we get to the details pane of an access point, as long as we do. At the moment, we have this one access point, so we'll click on him, and it is currently set to flex connect because that is where we left it in a previous video. However, let's take a look at these other modes. We have local, flex connect, monitor, rogue, sniffer, and bridge. Now, there are additional modes that are also possibilities and it depends on the type of controller and the capabilities of your access point. So now we know there's two different ways to get to the details of the access point. Let's take a look at what these modes represent. The default is local. And that's where we have an access point that's providing data access for clients. So Bob here wants to associate with a wireless network. The access point makes that possible. Of course, the access point in the background has a CAPWAP session over to the controller who's making those decisions. But there's one additional aspect regarding local I wanna point out, and that is monitoring. Not only does an access point in local mode provide data access for customers and a logical connection between Bob and the rest of his VLAN and the rest of the network based on routing, it also has the ability to scan all the other channels. And it goes something like this. Let's say the access point is currently on channel six, for example, in the 2.4 gigahertz range. And we'll say X marks the spot. So that's the primary channel that we're on. But what it's also gonna do, it's gonna spend quite a bit of time there, but it's also gonna check on the other frequencies and go all the way around the horn and then stay here. So it's really cycling the entire time with most of its attention on the channel where the data is, but it's also paying attention and looking at the other channels in that same range. And the benefit of that, it can feed information back to the controller about what's happening on those other frequencies. So in local mode, by default, every 180 seconds, every one of the channels in that range is gonna be scanned. If we wanted to change that, the way we would do it is go to wireless, and on the left-hand side, let's go down and work with our 2.4 gigahertz range. We'll go to 802.11 B, G, and N. And then down under general, 
This is where we can specify the channel scan interval. So currently every three minutes is gonna go through all the frequencies. If we wanted to be faster, we could change it to, for example, 60 seconds, and then it would go through all the channels within one minute. Out of this monitor interval, it does spend a larger chunk of time on the data channel where we have stations that are using data services than on the other frequencies. The benefit of having our access point do this off channel scanning is so that we have additional information about alternate choices. For example, if there starts to be interference and this access point has reported back to the controller that there's a different channel that has either less interference or no interference, the system can then make a more intelligent choice about moving to a different channel. Now the next mode monitor is very much like local except it doesn't support users. <laughs> so a user is not gonna be able to associate with the wireless local area network through an access point that is in monitor mode. So the only time you're gonna be using this is if you have an extra access point that you're not using for data, or perhaps you could take one that you're using temporarily allocate it to monitor mode while you do some troubleshooting or investigating regarding the RF space. Now, probably one of the coolest features, at least to me, besides using it for data, the access point can be a sniffer. We can tell it, hey, you know what? We want you to listen to this specific channel, let's say channel one or six or 11, down the 2.4 gigahertz range. And we want you to collect everything that you see and send it back to my management computer. So let's say we have a PC that's connected to the network right here. And it's running some software. For example, perhaps it's running Air Magnet or OmniPeak or the all-powerful and free Wireshark. And we could actually have the data that this sniffer mode access point is seeing and it could forward that all to the controller and the controller would then forward it to your management station. What your management station does with it at that point is based on the software you're running. So the information that can gather are things like signal strength, the packet size, timestamps, the addresses that were involved and so forth in that traffic. Now, if it collects any encrypted data, we're only as good as the ability to decrypt it. So if the encrypted content comes up to this management computer, unless we have the keys or the ability to decrypt it, we're just gonna have a bunch of encrypted data as payloads in some of those packets. So let's set this one up. We've got a controller that we're looking at. It has an access point that's joined it. If we go to the detail here, or if we go to wireless here, we can look at the detail of that access point. So we'll do that and we'll simply change his mode over to sniffer, just like that. Now it is going to take a reboot of that device. However, have no fear, we click on apply, upper right hand corner, it says, hey, he's gonna have to reboot and rejoin, is that okay? We say okay, and then through the magic of editing, you won't have to wait. So our access point has rebooted, it's now in sniffer mode, we're gonna go back into the details of that access point and tell it specifically, okay, guess what? We want you to sniff, so there's a little checkbox we have to check and we need to give the IP address of the management station that we want those packets sent to. And to do that, we're gonna go, I'm still under wireless. We're gonna to go to access points, radios, and 802.11b, g, and n. And this little trail of breadcrumbs lets you know exactly where we're at. Now from here, you might be thinking, how in the world do we configure the sniffer? I see no option. There's no hyperlinks anywhere. Well, check this out. At the very bottom, you need to scroll right just a little bit and over on the right, there's this little drop down. You just hover over it. And once you hover over that, we then have a drop down that gives us the option to select configure. And this, my friend, is where we have the magic secret sauce of turning on that sniffer function. So the access point is in sniffer mode. We come to 802.11 BGN Cisco APs, configure, and we need to check that box right there. Now, once we do check that box, it now says, great, what channel would you like to sniff? Well, in the US, we have the non-overlapping channels of one, six, and 11 in that 2.4 gigahertz space. I happen to have a wireless network that's in my control on channel 11. So if we wanna sniff that, I click on 11, and now it's saying, okay, where's the server IP address? Where do you want, when these packets are arriving at the wireless LAN controller, where do you want those packets sent? And I'm gonna put my management computer, the one that I'm currently sitting at. So let's find out what that is. This is the computer I'm currently sitting at, IP config, and it says, Keith, your computer is 192.168.1.15. Fantastic. Now I'd wanna make sure I have reachability to that IP address from my controller, which I do. In fact, we could ping it right here just to verify that. We'll ping over to 172.16.10.5, which is the IP address of the controller. 
that looks successful. We'll dismiss that window with our gratitude and we'll put in our address right there. 192.168.1.15. So I'll click on apply and it doesn't feel any different. However, let's bring up Wireshark and see what's pouring in. So here's Wireshark. We're gonna listen on the wired interface. That's the IP address that we just looked at. So we're over a thousand, we're over 2000 and climbing packets. And that'll be enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop that capture. I'm also gonna go back and turn off that feature of sniffing. So I'm gonna deselect that, click on apply, because I don't want that barrage of traffic. If I'm not interested in looking at it, I don't want it continually being sent all the time. Let's minimize the wireless LAN controller. Let's bring back our Wireshark. And let's take a look at some of the details of these packets. So they're UDP. They're encapsulated inside of UDP. They're from the source IP address of 172.16.10.5, which is our wireless LAN controller. They were addressed to the IP address of my computer, 192.168.1.15. And we might be saying, well, Keith, this doesn't look very interesting. It's like it has the IP address of the controller and this PC. How is that helpful? Well, we need to give Wireshark a little clue on this type of traffic so it can actually properly dissect it and elaborate on it for us. In Wireshark, we want to do a couple of things. Number one, we want to select any one of these packets. We want to right click on one of these packets and we're going to tell it, we want you to decode this as, select this option, decode as, from the pop-up it's saying, hey, you know this traffic? What would you like me to decode these as? So if we're on an old version of Wireshark, like version 1.5 or 1.6, we would select Arrow Peak, and that would be the protocol we would tell it. In current flavors of Wireshark, like 1.10 and beyond, and the protocol we'd want to say is Peak Remote. So you can just click over here on the right-hand column, hit P as in Paul, scroll down a little bit, and go to Peak Remote. And that will give it a better clue on how to dissect and process the packets that are currently being captured. So we'll click on OK. It went through all those 5,188 packets. So now you'll notice we have a whole bunch of really cool information to look at. For example, we have probe requests and probe response. We have beacons. If we scroll around, I'm sure we're bound to find things like clear to sends along with request to sends. So that's a beacon from SSID Barker, which happens to be on channel 11. Now regarding this bridge mode for access points, I've got a question for you about Bob. He's at a PC and Lois, who's at another PC? And this PC is connected to a 100 meter cable and Lois is too. What's the problem about connecting them together? Well, they would exceed the spec for 802.3 ethernet. However, if we wanted them to connect, what could we use? Well, we're not gonna use a hub because that's not very effective. Then it would be half duplex and everything else, but we could use a bridge or more commonly called a high speed switch that would also do it too. So by bridging these two together, we can have connectivity across them at layer two. Well, guess what's going to happen if we put access points in bridge mode, we can have multiple access points that can carry the traffic across on behalf of our customers. So if we're building a mesh AP network, which you may have seen, or now you're going to hear the term map to do that, we would start by putting two or more access points into bridge mode and actually creating a mesh network out of them. So that's what bridge mode can offer. Now, all of these modes are not gonna be supported on all access points or with all controllers. You have to have the right mix. So if you're looking for a specific feature for deployment, make sure you look at the documentation, make sure the wireless LAN controller supports that mode and the access point you're gonna use with that controller supports that mode. I think it'll also be interesting to you to know that not every controller will work with every access point. So that'd be another thing to check out from the documentation, just to make sure that the access point you plan to use is compatible at all with the controller you plan to use. The Office Extend AP is a fascinating idea and I really like it. It goes something like this. Here we have the company headquarters and up here we have the wireless LAN controller. Then we have this big cloud, which you and I love and know as the internet. And then we have the remote worker. Where are they? Well, let's say they're at their home office. So we'll draw a little home office there. Now, a lot of times, not every time, but a lot of times at a home office, you have more than just yourself. There's usually a family, friends, et cetera, that are in that space with you. So if that's the case, how do we provide wireless access for the user? Let's say it's Bob, the remote employee, but at the same time, we don't have wireless access for Lois and Jim and Sally and everybody else who might be there. And the answer is we have an access point that we plug into this house we give it connectivity through whatever internet access, DSL or cable modem the customer has, 
and the access point phones home over the internet to the controller and then we have a wireless SSID for Bob. So with that SSID, when he authenticates, whatever the requirements are for that authentication, he'll have to provide before he can get on it. And once he's on that wireless network, he's got this tunnel. He now also has access to the corporate resources. So it's like taking your wireless with you. He's a wireless extension at his home office and he has access to the normal resources. Now at the same time, what do we do for Lois, Jimmy, and Sally? Well, what we can do is on that same access point, we can create additional service set identifiers. For example, called guest or whatever we want to name it. And then when Lois, Jim, and Sally, who are not employees of the company, when they want to use the internet and get on the wireless, they can jump onto this SSID. So let me get another color we can see. We'll call this guest. And this guest wireless network, anybody who connects to it, as they try to go out to the internet, it's going to send their traffic naked out to the internet as it normally would go. And at the same time, when Bob's using his corporate SSID, his corporate wireless network, Bob's traffic is tunneled back up to corporate. And this last one, which was called Hybrid Remote Edge Access Point, had the ability to help support a remote location. For example, again, we have headquarters, but now instead of a remote home office, we have a remote branch office. So we'll call this branch over here. The wireless LAN controller lives up at the headquarters. We have some type of a wide area network connectivity to that branch office. At the branch, we have the access point. And if we're using this hybrid remote edge access point, what it can do, it can make decisions about authentication and the actual switching, referring to the actual movement of frames. See, by default, an access point would take traffic from Bob, even if it's directed locally. And let's say that Bob is communicating with a local printer. So traditionally, Bob, when he connects to the wireless network, he has to authenticate. So with CapWap, that authentication would be sent up through a CapWap tunnel up to the controller who would make the decision. And then when Bob wants to send data traffic, that traffic would also be sent up through the tunnel to the controller before it would be forwarded back down the WAN link to the printer in the event he's printing. Well, using this hybrid access point, we can configure whether or not the authentication should go across to the controller. If we want to, we can decide, you know what, let's go ahead and do local authentication on the access point itself. Or let's do local switching on the access point itself. And the decision can be made to mix and match. We could do authentication to the controller and then local switching, or based on a WAN link that breaks or we can't reach the controller, then make the decision to do local authentication and local switching if the access point at the branch cannot communicate with the wireless LAN controller. So in this nugget, we've identified several different modes that we can put an access point into based on the function and features we want to get from that access point. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.